Hi, I'm Sam Sells, and welcome to my podcast, Clean Money. I like to say investing matters, and my show is to talk with everyday folks that are not only creating great success, but making an impact in society and improving the lives of others. That is my mission, and I want to share my stories and others with you. Welcome to Clean Money. Hey everyone, thank you again for joining with us today for another great episode of Clean Money, where we talk about making a difference in the world through our investments of time and resources. My guest today is Jason Brown, um, who is a super cool dude. Um, I, guess, I don't know if that's still politically correct or not, but super cool anyways. <laughs> and, uh, let me tell you a little bit about who Jason Brown is. So he has over a decade of stocks and options trading experience, and he's a graduate of Wayne State University with a bachelor's degree in finance. At the age of 23, Jason took a $10,000 student loan and turned it into a six-figure trading account. And as a result, his passion for teaching others how to unlock the financial power of the stock market began. Jason has since created his own online stock market education company, Power Trades University. I love that uh, name, which houses his courses, live trading, coaching, and community that has helped thousands of students around the world to start investing and learn the strategies to survive in both up and down markets. He is an active YouTuber with over 80,000 subscribers and has videos that have reached over a million views and is the host of the Money, Markets, and Mindset podcast, which we will add um, a link to that in the show notes for everyone. Um, so, Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining. Sam, thanks for having me, man. Just excited to talk about all the things, invest in clean money, wherever we want to go with this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we, you know, we we like to talk about, you know, what we can do in the world as investors. And and before we got on the call together, you were talking, or when we got on the call before we started recording, you were telling me how you like to talk to people about what they can do with the money they make, Um from investing, like the proceeds, the cash that comes out to them. And I want you to share just kind of a, a little bit about that real quick, like how you um, how you view money, um, investment dollars and, and proceeds and, and what you think people should do with those funds once they have them. Yeah. Well, first, if it's okay with you, just want to give you a little bit of background on like where my philosophies come from with investing, because it may be different from other guests you've had, um, but grew up in Detroit, pretty much poor, single parent household. My dad passed away when I was uh, two years old from a car accident. My mom's from Mississippi. And, you know, we grew up, I said we grew up poor, like we, we slept in sleeping bags because we didn't have enough money for a bed. And so we thought beds were for grownups, literally. Um, and so at an early age, I kind of noticed like that there was a difference between me and other people financially. Like when I went to my friend's house and he had a bed and I was like, excited, like you have a bed. He's like, well, of course I have a bed. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? I'm like, well, we sleep in sleeping bags. Right. Um, I remember the first time I dated a girl outside of my community and they didn't have bars on their windows. And like everybody I knew had bars on their window. We're worried about our cars getting stolen, different things like that. And so the reason I share that story with you is because you know, when I look at how I was able to get out of that situation, you know, I always heard about the stock market and heard about people investing. And I was working for Sprint PCS making $8 an hour. And I took my graduation money from high school and I opened an investment account with like $2,000. I went to a well-known bank, opened an investment account. And the girl just asked me two questions. Like, you know, what's your goal? Well, I'm like, to be rich. Why else do people do this? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then she said, so you want aggressive funds? I'm like, yeah, I want aggressive funds. And so anyway, I gave her my $2,000. I came back uh, two years later, two, almost three years later, and they lost seven, uh, not 1700. They lost $1,300 of my money. So I only had $700 left. Wow. And, you know, you taught that you hear, at least in my community, you heard like, oh, if you would have put $2,000 away when you were 18 and came back in 20 years, you'd be a millionaire at 40. Yeah. 
40 years later, you would have, it would have grown. And so I thought, why didn't, what doesn't, why doesn't everybody do that? And so I did that. And two years later, I come back thinking I'll have $6,000 and no, I had less money than what I started with. And so fast forward, I said, give me my money. I'll do this on my own. And that was the first time I realized that the professionals lose money. So I took my 700 bucks, spent $200 on like some gym shoes or something to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I have $500. I'm making $8 working for Sprint, $64 on a Saturday. When you take taxes out, I have $50 take home. I was like, our stock is $5 a share. I can buy a hundred shares. And so I was like, if I could just get it to move 50 cents, I don't need to move $5, $100, 50 cents. I can make $50 and I won't have to work weekends. And so like most people, I bought at five. And you think it went to 550? Absolutely not. The stock fell down to four, four dollars. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't work. Then the stock went back up to five. I'm like, okay, I just needed to go to 550. And it fell back down to four dollars. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm like, the stock market is rigged. They know I needed to go to five dot five fifty and they won't let it go. It's gambling, it's like a casino. And then it went back up to five and I had an epiphany. I said, I've seen this before. I said, I'm going to get out at five. And then when it falls to four, I'm going to get in at four. And when it went back up to five, I got out and I made my first hundred dollars. What happened from that moment was I was like, wow, what if I had $5,000? And I was like, what if I had $10,000? I was like, oh my God, I would have been rich. And so I was like, well, how do I get $10,000? And so I had a scholarship to Wayne State University and what I did was I applied for financial aid because I knew they would overpay the account. And when they overpaid the account, I would get the refund. So I took a $10,000 student loan refund. And that's how I grew that account to a hundred and like over a hundred thousand dollars as a 21 year old college student. So how does this tie back into the original question you asked me, like, you know, about investing and using the money for good and stuff like that. I believe if we get the, I believe really the the main block to get into the money is the information. And so if we can get the information, then we can get to the money. And if we can get to the money, then we can turn around and use it and do some good. Because I can tell you being, uh, you know, growing up like a poor black kid from Detroit, getting the money and showing people that they can, drive the car of their dreams and not be a rapper, not be a basketball player to live in the house that we live in. And show people that you don't have to sell drugs to do this um, is my way of saying like, there's more than one way to be responsible with the money, not only just trying to pick environmentally, socially governance companies to invest in, but let's get the money and then we can come back to the neighborhoods, be examples. I do free workshops at um, high schools. I do public speaking. I go back to the neighborhood. So there's so many ways that you can get the money and then start to do some good with it. I'm one of the biggest contributors at my church. So, I mean, we could go on and on. And that's not to brag, but it's just to say that once you actually get to the money and get, you know, as they say, like when you're in an airplane, once you put your own mask on first and you're head is above water, you're out of debt, you understand how the game of money works, then you can really start to look at where do I put my money so that it counts, whether that's investing in clean companies, whether that's donating to your churches and charity, whether that's having the free time now to step back into the environments where they don't teach or share the same information that you wish they did. But now you're back and you can help and you can do it without worrying about how much do I get paid for it, right? Right. Because, you know, I can go back to the same schools and not worry about a teacher's salary, but I can donate my time to help now because that's not a concern for me. So, uh, you know, so there's so many ways you can give back. And once you actually get to the money and get in the place of, you know, prosperity from a time standpoint, a knowledge standpoint for yourself. I love this. I, I love that um, you're going back into a, a, a place where that knowledge is not common. And you look at our school system, and you would think over time it would focus more and more on helping us become self-sufficient, uh, becoming you know more stable in our lives. There's no reason why every American um, can't be you know you know can't have wealth in their family, right? It's there's plenty of wealth out there, 
Uh, but that that information, the dissemination of the information, the understanding of how to use that information, um, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's so close held or close so closely held, or when it's freely shared, it gets shared alongside all the other gimmicks and scams, and people can't tell the difference. And so I know, I mean, even like this week, we were talking to somebody about, hey, like you can make money in commercial real estate. This is kind of how it works. And, uh, you know, the person I was talking to about that, they went and told their friends and their friends are like, don't listen to Sam, it's a scam. Yeah, it's like, no, it's not a scam. Like it's it's just how it works. This is how it how it works. Yeah, and, and the thing about when people say something is a scam, that's the first indication that they don't understand how it works, number one. And then number two, you got to think about how we were programmed. I mean, think about, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about your family background, but if you think about the average person's family background, what are they programmed to do? Go to school, get a good job, what they tell you, work hard, things don't come easy, you can't make it overnight, nobody makes money that quick. Right. So money doesn't grow on trees. Right. So you kind of grow up with all these programming that money's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to take all day to make it eight hours plus overtime in a factory. And so when someone says like, nope, I bought a property wholesale, didn't flip it and made ten thousand dollars. They're like, it's a scam. Who did you cheat out of the money? It's like, well, no one's really teaching that they're teaching. Right. It has to be hard. You have to work hard for it. Uh, when I say like, nope, I just sit at home, I read charts, press a button, I can buy it and I can get out. I, we call that printing money. Well, here I am saying you can print money and then hear your parents saying money doesn't grow on trees. I'm saying it does grow on trees. I print it right on the paper and paper comes from trees. Right. So no wonder, depending on your mindset and your training, you're like, that's a scam. If you haven't had the same mindset or training or the ability to break through some of these old paradigms that have been drilled into us from, you know, the cotton picking days and the manufacturing boom days when that was true, that the only way you could make money was hard labor and hard work and every two weeks from a paycheck. But we live in the digital age now. I mean, people are making money from teaching you how to use chat GPT, how to use be yeah. social media, be influencers. But if you asked our ancestors, they'd be like, that's a scam. What y'all doing? What are those cell phones? Why are people paying you to represent their company? Don't they use commercials for that? It's like, you don't understand. We are the new commercial. But if you're talking to someone who's not on social media, what are they going to say? Yeah, that's a, that sounds like a scam. You you gave them your PayPal account. You gave them your your, yeah. your information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My father in law all the time is like. Sam, that stuff is terrible. You shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> it's I'm like, all right, you have a retirement. You're one of the fortunate ones. I grew up rural Oklahoma, poor, um, like no running water, you know, no power at times, just nuts. So taking baths and horse troughs because that's where we, uh, so I, I get you, Jason, like you're, you, you don't choose where you get to grow up. Right. Um, and you don't get the choose the mindset that gets pushed down on you or taught to you. Um, money don't doesn't grow on trees. I probably used that um, term probably three or four years ago, and I haven't since. You know, because my I keep elevating my mindset, and as I spend more and more time with people who have made hundreds of millions of dollars and more, it's like, oh, that's how that works. Yeah, you really <laughs> I mean, can grow on trees. <laughs> yeah, right. And and when we when we jumped into commercial real estate, it took me six months of just working on my mindset and reading and studying and learning. I was like, I'm going to buy that apartment complex. And people around me laughed at me, like, no, you're not. People that knew me were like, you probably will, Sam. <laughs> Let us know. And then now, like, I wouldn't even buy that one that I was talking about because it was way too little. $2 million apartment complex. I'm not touching that thing. That's a waste of time, effort, and money. Let's go find something. $20 million. Now let's, now we're starting to talk, right? It's just the difference once you understand, you know, where you spend your time and how you've changed is, is dramatic. Um, so, wow. So you, I love that you go back. Um, 
you're teaching people how to overcome this mindset. What is their, so we talked about scam. What's the other b- biggest limiting factor you have found um, in kids, people that you talk to uh, about how to make money on the stock market? So there's several limiting beliefs in, I think anyone listening to this probably thinks anytime you hear about trading in the stock market, the first type of trading they think is day trade. They think you must sit in front of the computer all day long, staring at charts up and down. I got to quit my full-time job to do this. And it's like, that is not the only version of investing or version of trading like is day trading, but, but that's the most popular buzzword. And so a a lot of the times I'm not, you know, for example, I just did a trade where I made $60,000 in five days and it was on Tesla trading stock options. And so after we close a trade like that, I may not trade again for two months, three months. I don't know. But the perception to people on the outside is that like you're trading every day. And it's like, no, no, no. I wait for the right opportunities. We call it predictable, repeatable patterns. We look for them. And then once they form, we strike. And so all the rest of the time, we're just kind of waiting. But that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is that you're in front of the computer all day long. I think the second biggest misconception is that you have to have a lot of money. And uh, the, the word a lot of money is relative because what's a lot of money? 500, 5,000, 50,000, 500,000. Like what's a lot of money? What people don't understand is it doesn't really matter how much money you have. If you get started in this machine, you allow compounding interest and compounding profits to catch up and you could eventually have a million dollar account of, you know, you know, let's start small because some people can't dream. Like whenever you say like you can have a million dollar account, I think we lose people sometimes for us who have touched millions, had millions made it, lost it. It's easy to just throw that out there. But then I think the general public, when they hear a million, they just turn off, but it may be easy to have a five, $10,000 account. If you get started with, two thousand dollars right and you start making i mean think about it if you can make five hundred dollars a month in 12 months you'll have extra six thousand dollars on top of the two thousand that you started with so it's not that far-fetched that in a year you could be trading with a ten thousand dollar account just starting from two thousand or something less but as you continue to make that five hundred dollars it adds up now you got twenty five hundred dollars to invest with next month okay Mm -hmm. had it again now you got three thousand but we're not really taught the power of that compounding. We think like, oh, what am I going to do with my little $2,000 or my little 500? And if you had that type of mindset, you'd look at your tax returns different versus I'm going to use this to put down on a car. You're like, no, I'm going to use this to see if I can make $500 a month and make that pay for my car note. Right. And so you start to look at money different, but that's one of the misconceptions that you need a lot of money. And I would say the third one. So the first one is that you have to do this all day. Second one is that you need a lot of money. And I would say the third misconception is like, people say like, am I going to have to go back to school for this? Or I'm not good with numbers. You know, I, oh, that's good for you. I would never be good at something like that. And I, I think like, you're already good at it. You're doing it every single day. Like nobody goes to the grocery store, gives them a $20 bill for something that costs $2. And if they gave you $5 back, no one would say, oh, that's okay. I'm not good with money. I'm not good with numbers. <laughs> You'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That was two bucks. I gave you a 20. Where am I there? $18 at? Money. Like no one says, oh, that's okay. I'm just not good with money. What? I think that's the right amount you gave me back. So we pick and choose when we want to be good with numbers and good with money. When we come over to stock market, I think that's just an excuse to really say, I don't understand it. I'd really like to learn it, but people's ego won't let them just say, I don't understand it. I wish I did. I'm kind of ignorant to that. How does it work? Instead, they say stuff like, I'm just not good with numbers and money. It's like, I call BS. And so we look at charts every single day in the stock market or once a week, People say, well, I can't read charts. I don't understand that. And so in, in one of my presentations, I do two examples. I say, okay, pull out your phone. Tell me what the weather's going to be tomorrow, right? Okay. Is it going to rain? Is it going to be sunny? What is it going to be, right? And so if you if you pull out your iPhone or your Android, you've learned how to read the chart. Those little things right there are clouds. Those little dots coming down from it is rain. You've learned to see that it's a 68% chance of precipitation. So it's like, Okay, did you go to weatherman school to learn how to read that? No, you just kind of over time realize that's what it looks like. Oh, that little yellow thing is the sun. Okay, so you understand how to read charts. 
Or another one, I say, like a little heartbeat monitor in the hospital. I say, what happens when that goes flat? They're like the person's dead. Okay, what happens if it's beaten? Then they're doing okay. Their heart's beating. Okay, perfect. Did you have to become a doctor to understand what that graph means? Absolutely not. You've seen it in enough TV shows, hospitals. No one had to go to get a PhD or go to law school, I mean, med school or go to graduate school, nursing school to know what that heartbeat monitor is. So we've proven that we can read charts and patterns in our everyday life. When it comes over to the stock market, we just like to wave the the white flag and say like, oh, I don't know what I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know what that stuff means and I'll never know what it means. It's like, well, I'm pretty sure when you were a little kid, you didn't know what that heartbeat monitor meant. I'm pretty sure when you were first new to the earth, you didn't understand what a weather app was on an iPhone. So like anything else, of course, you don't know how to read it right now because you haven't been taught. But what I'm trying to prove is that you can learn if you choose to. So let's remove the excuse that you'll never know how to do it. I'd rather you say, I just don't want to put in the effort to learn how to do it because then I'll actually be held responsible for becoming wealthy. And that scares most people because they're used to somebody else being responsible for how much money they make by cutting them a paycheck every two weeks, because right. that's how we've been programmed. And you have to ask for you know a raise. And it, there's like more yeah. articles online about how to ask for a raise than there are about how to make money you know, or how to become independently wealthy. Um, and then, it, yeah, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you. So I, I, I understand now your philosophy, um, and that the drive to help other people, um, partially, um, because you came from that and you want to go back and say, Hey, everybody, you can make a huge difference in your life. You can change the trajectory of your family, of your life. You don't need to live in a house that has bars on it anymore. You don't need to be worried about your car being stolen anymore because you can leave this entire community and go someplace different, wherever you want to live and have an awesome bookshelf in the back uh, like you do. Right. And, and you can become something better, not, not a rapper, not a, um, you know, basketball player. You, be, you can become somebody who drives impacts, changes people's lives and so forth. When did you become a coach, like an official coach and start coaching people? Um, and why do you recommend people get a coach in the first place? Yeah, so that's a great question. And it's a great question because as I look back on my journey, what happened was when I made that one hundred and thirteen, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a 21 year old college student, I made that just through trial and error, reading the charts. And when I saw Sprint and I bought it at five, it fell to four. I started studying patterns and said, like, what other patterns are out there that I don't know? And so once I learned what the other patterns were, I was able to put that $10,000 in and then grow it to 100 plus thousand as a 21 year old college student. I say all that to say I made a bunch of money. Then I was day trading full time for three years, running up 100,000 a year. Year three, I actually went into year three, risked quarter million dollars trying to make half a million because I was going to buy a condo downtown Royal Oak, Michigan. I'm like, I'm going to pay cash for it. I actually lost everything. And so what happened was when I lost everything, I was like, I got to go back to the only thing I know. I got to get a job. <laughs> and so I had to get a job selling cell phones again. So what happened was I had the crazy idea. I'm like, I can't be the only guy that's ever lost money. So I was like, I'm going to record myself making the money back. And so that's how I started my YouTube channel. I was like, I'm going to record the lessons I learned, making yeah. the money back, everything. So I started my YouTube channel. And then people, I said, I'm going to vlog all my trades and show people how I make money when I, as I make these trades, back. which is why I, I post my trades on my channel. It's not to brag. It's just, if you go way back, I'm just used to sharing how I made the money back. And now the trades are just bigger. So then I started to lose money a little bit again. And then I was like, let me take a course and make sure and get a co some coaching, make sure I understand what I think I understand. I took a course, took a, got a coach and I became as good as the coach because I wasn't bad in the first place. I just, I was self-taught this whole thing. I'm like, maybe I'm missing something. So I became as good as the coach. But then I started questioning, why don't they explain it like this? How come they don't make it simpler and simpler terms? How come they're using these fancy words? And so I was like, man, I'm going to explain it so that regular people like me who didn't grow up with a background in this, didn't grow up talking about investment at the dinner table. You know, we're talking about, you know, let's not get up, let our lights get cut off. And like we weren't talking about like what stock are we going to buy today and how's our investments doing? So I'm like, 
I was like, I want to explain this so that regular people could understand it. And as I started to talk about what I was doing, I was like, well, they're like, well, how did you grow the account back so quick? And how'd you grow it the first time? I'm like, well, I wait for these predictable, repeatable patterns. Then I put a lot of power behind it. And whether that's power from money or power with leverage by using options. And so then I was like, well, it's kind of like power trading. Like I put a lot of power behind the trades that I believe have a high probability. And so that's how we came up with Power Trades University. And as I was blogging and sharing my trades, people would just be like, can you teach me? And can you share it with me? And I was like, I'm as good as this coach, but they explain it all fancy. I was like, I'm going to create a course where regular people can understand it. And that was really how I got into coaching when I created my own course so that regular people can understand. Then they were like, how can I find the trades that you're in? And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. I look for the trades anyway. Why don't I share people real time how I find, how I analyze the market when I'm buying, when I sell. And that's exactly what we do at Power Trades University. And then we eventually grew into having several tiers of the program um, up to a high level mastermind where you know, we have clients who pay up to $20,000 a year to be part of that mastermind, but we didn't start out up there. We got programs that's as little as free or a hundred dollars as well too. But we started off just doing free videos on YouTube, just showing people the journey and documenting it as we made it back. So that's how I got into coaching. That's, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. I, two things I want to point out here. One, at the very, very beginning, you invested and you lost money. So then you pulled the money out from the professionals, right? You know, I give my money to the professionals. And um, I know what the professionals do with that money now. So I will never do that, you know, because I know I've been in the game now. I'm like, oh, that's what they do with the money. I'm not doing that, right? And so, Mm -hmm. so much better ways to do this. But I didn't know that before. And so I was always doing, you know, trading myself. You lost money. You took it. You took control, you lost money again. And instead of quitting and saying, I'm never going into the stock market again, it's terrible. You said, why did I lose money? Why was my expectation wrong? And you kept wanting it to go someplace that wasn't going to go, at least not in that time period. And then you said, well, what's the patterns? And you learn the patterns, you get a coach who gets you to his space really quickly. And then you realize, like, I know more than this coach and I should do it differently because I have a different viewpoint, self-taught, you know, I didn't go to, you know, Harvard or Wharton. And they tell me that the, you know, the blah, 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 you know, uh, no, I just want to make money. Like, uh, I don't need any of that stuff to teach me how to make money. This is how you make money. Um, which is true. You don't need any of that stuff to know how to make money. Um, and then, and then you go out, you do it and you teach other people how to actually do it with hard earned knowledge, wisdom, experience, and to avoid the mistakes that you made in the beginning. So if somebody pays $20,000 for their mastermind, do you help them avoid mistakes that cost you more than $20,000? What's the real value there? Yeah. And so let me break down um because i think when people hear twenty thousand dollars they're like whoa like that's they, they you know I, i'm very conscious that some people tune out when they hear 20 grand so let me let me let me kind of take you through the levels um I, because there was no information available so so another thing you i think you asked me like why do i coach or why did i get a coach uh one of the other things that's powerful that i learned is i was getting books back in the day to try to read on the stock market and like they were talking so fancy that I would have to get another book to understand that book. And then I had to get another book to understand that book. Next, you know, I had like three books trying to understand the first book. And then I was like, well, someone just show me. And so that's when I learned like the power of just video and just logging in and like showing you. And so we have everything from free all the way up to a 20K mastermind. So the way it works is I'm like, I never want to alienate people because they don't have money. So it's like, what can I do for them? That's where my free YouTube videos are. I have videos on like how to open your first account, how to place your first trade. So there's the free version. But in the free version, I can't hang out there, answer questions all day, different things like that. Um, We also have our free PDF downloads. So it's like you want to download, like some people like to read better. So it's like, okay, download our white paper, our PDF, you know, it's like 10, 13 pages that walks you through how to open your account, what's the options, how to buy options. So then there's the free stuff. 
Then we put together a free course that was like, here's how to open your account. Here's the mindset. Here's why you need a computer. Or if you use your phone, here's what you need on your phone. So we never want to alienate people because they don't have money. But then it was like, how can I see your trades? How can I have conversation or dialogue with you? So then we created like our own traders forum. We live stream and all that stuff costs money. They don't just let me live stream for free and give me free cameras. Right. And then my time's not free. And so we created like our membership levels. And so those start like the courses start as low as 297. You're like, I just want to learn how the stock market works, understand it. I believe it's 297 or 597. We have several courses, but you can get started as low as free to like 600 bucks, but you're studying on your own. But then you're like, well, I want to be part of community. I want to ask questions. I want to see what you're doing. Then you can join the membership, which is anywhere from like a thousand dollars. It's like a hundred dollars a month, depending on which plan. Then there's people who are like, I really want to master like the advanced stuff. And that's like a $6,000 program. Like what are MACD, Bollinger Bins, all these crazy terms. I'm like, okay, let's work that out. Then there's people who are like, I have a half a million to a million dollars. I want a personalized game plan. I want to work with you. I want to, before I buy it, I want to ask a question. I want you to guide me when it goes against me. Those are the people who pay 20000 So it's more about the level of access and level of service. But I don't want people to think you have to have $20,000 or you can't get in the game. It's like there's a free level of service, which you can watch the YouTube videos. And sometimes we reply to the comments. Sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. That's what you get for free. And then there's I want to be part of your community where I hang out and do answer questions from our members. And then there's like I have a million dollars. Let's talk. I like what you're doing. I love to protect it. Maybe I got a million dollars and I got 800,000 with my financial advisor. I'm going to take 200,000 and see if I can grow it myself. We get a lot of that. Like I'm going to take a portion of it and I want to learn what, what you're doing and how to safely grow and see if I can outproduce my financial advisor. So that's kind of what you get as you scale up through the levels of price. And it's just more about access and how in depth are you trying to learn this? And then even for me, there's another level that we're working on, which is starting a hedge fund, because we have people who say, like, I have money. I mean, I'm around other millionaires, multimillionaires, people doing way better than me. They're like, we got money, but we just don't even have time to learn it. I'm an expert in real estate. I own a brokerage. I own three McDonald's. I just want to put some money with you. I'm like, I don't have a solution for that because I'm not licensed to manage people's money. So now we're looking at a hedge fund to service those type of people. So we end up adding on services depending on how much we want to serve the marketplace and the community. And obviously at each higher level, either the cost goes up or the buy-in is high and we take a piece of the pie. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, that's fantastic. When I first started, it was all, you know, YouTube university, this was five years ago, right? Uh, YouTube university and, and for clarity, I'd spent, you know, over a decade doing single family flips, but commercial is different than single family, right? Um, day trading is different than putting your money in your Roth or whatever and letting it just ride the waves of the market. Um, and so to go there, you know, we just, we started and did the same thing, jumped in, made some wins, made some losses. Uh, and over time, realized that, you know, I needed some mentorship, got some mentorship quickly, the same thing. All of a sudden I'm looking at my mentor, like I've done more than you have. I need a different mentor, you know? Uh, and, and then, you know, and now I have a coach who helps me figure things out. And so we make much, much better decisions, much better decisions. I would have avoided huge losses had I had a coach Absolutely. in the beginning. Absolutely. And that's what we're here to do is help people avoid the mistakes that we've made, not the ones we read about in the book, the ones we actually made and have come back from. And I think I wonder how far would I be if I had a coach early on? I also wonder if I would be the same guy, though, if I had a coach, because I did learn a lot from making those mistakes and the hard knocks. And I learned a lot about perseverance. I learned a lot about figuring it out, getting back up after getting knocked down, you know, so I don't, you know, I like them both. I like the journey that that we came. But if we can help some people, you know, avoid some of the big ones that take them out, like blowing up their account and they're like, I don't have any more money. I don't know where I'm going to get money from. We could help them avoid that. 
then we're in the right place. And and you said something too that I want to just kind of talk touch on. It's like, you know, there's two things that's important about having a mentor or having a coach. It's like what's beautiful about going the entrepreneurial route with investing or real estate is that you literally have the opportunity to pass your mentor. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's not a knock on the mentor. It's like, wow, they get to say I poured into that guy or that girl. I helped them, get, you know, get the concepts down to where they're doing better than me. So that's a feather in their cap. First of all, and the second of all, but we're in a space where it's okay to pass your mentor and it's actually celebrated, right? Yeah. You think about your job, like no one wants to help you take their position. Like no one's like, yeah, come on, take my position, do better than me. Cause if you do, <laughs> they're like, I'm going to get fired. They're going to shine a light on the fact that I don't know this or I'm not doing this. So in that system, you're at, it's actually designed to kind of keep you in your place, keep yeah. you in check. Because I don't want you to take my job or my position. And then no matter how high you rise up, you'll never be the owner of the company. Right. Right. So it's super powerful that people take a look at this industry because it's it's the opposite of what you're taught. And that system is like, go to work, get a check. Don't don't challenge the status quo or the system too much. Maybe we'll give you a raise. Maybe you can move up a little bit. But we we'll, we don't want you to get too out of control because you'll make me look bad, right? Yeah. And so in this system, it's like make all the money you want. You can trade more stocks than me. You can buy more real estate than me. That's fine. There's yeah. no shortage of stocks. I don't have enough money to buy all of Apple anyway. Neither does Warren Buffett. So like, yeah. I don't care if you're in the same trades. So it's a different relationship where it's like we could go after the same thing and both make money, or you could put more at it and surpass me. Congratulations. If you get really good, I'll hire you as a coach. We could use some more coaches, you know, <laughs> yeah, versus yeah. me saying, like, I don't want my students to be better than me. The best compliment you can do is make a bunch of money and go off and tell a bunch of people where you learn from. So totally different environment on this side versus in a traditional, you know, go to school, nine to five work environment. And that is why people find it hard to believe. They'll say stuff like, well, why would you want to help people if you're making so much money? It's like, because it doesn't hurt me. Yeah. It doesn't hurt me to teach you how to trade the stock market. Because you're thinking, helps. Yeah. yeah, you're thinking about that old W-2 mindset. Why would your boss help you take his job? I get it. But over here, it's like, I want you to be great. You become a testimony then. Like, that helps yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, I've had the same conversations. It's like, I... You make money, I make money. It's not like I'm taking your money, but I'm teaching you how to make money. You make money. You and, you know, we work together. We do partnerships. You go off on your own. You're a great testimony. You know, I, and that was part of the thing that, you know, really pushed me into going into coaching a lot more was when, you know, a guy that I started with at the very beginning and, you know, a year later he had made $700,000 and, you know, I helped him and coached him how to do it, what to do. Uh, we did the deal together in the same deal. And he made 700 grand in a year. And I know you have the same thing where you see people just made incredible money. And I just thought I should do this more often. His money is his money. It's not my money. But the success and the change he's had in his life, that is incredibly rewarding to me as an individual. Uh, I don't need his money. Just like you don't need those your students' money. But you do make more money when they make money and in the satisfaction, the impact it has in your own life is palpable. Like this is how we get happy folks is by helping other people. It's not by the dollars. It's by the, you know, the, the lives that are changed. That's what makes a significant impact in our own lives. That's why we do it. Yeah. And then it goes back full circle to what we talked about at the beginning, right? It's like, I believe the information is what's most valuable, not the money. And so I'm on a mission to spread the information, especially in my community where the information has been lacking for the longest. But even outside of my community, it's like I'm screaming from the mountaintops like, guys, this is how it works. This is what they don't want you to know, because if I can help you make money, guess what? You live in a community where there's a church. That church is feeding homeless people. That church is doing missions. You live in a community where there's a boys and girls club. If you could yeah. now don't have to worry about, can you take an hour off of work or be forced to use vacation or sick time? Cause you make enough money over here that 
You can go volunteer time at that boys and girls club, that soup kitchen, that food shelter. Like this spreads out into corners of the earth that I can't reach from here in Detroit, Michigan. But as I help people over the computer, they go back to their communities, their neighborhoods, their family. And that information and the money that they make starts to have an impact in that community because of something I put out on the Internet. And so that's the power of not just holding our cards to our chest and like, I don't want to teach anyone. I don't want to help anyone. It's like, no, I'd love to know that somebody in Tennessee right now was able to buy their wife who's catching the bus a car now because of the stock market. I'd love that some family in, you know, Wichita, Kansas was not sure how they go put their kids through college. But in two years, after watching my course and investing, their kids won't be going to school for four years. But in four years from now, they've now made enough money to pay for the first two years of tuition. The kid either doesn't have to take out student loans or the kid doesn't have to go to school and work. Right. They could just yeah. focus on studying. And that's the stuff that you never know how your your message, your information is impacting people. You won't know until years from now, until, you know, decades from now, when people message you, if you stay in the game, they're like, I took, I mean, I see it now. People are like, I took your course and guess what I was able to do? And because of you, my son, my daughter, we all look at stocks on Monday now. Like that, don't, I don't care if they even make money. The fact that they're now sitting down at the dinner table talking about stocks as a family is already a win from just putting out this information into the atmosphere. Yeah. That's a game changer. Absolutely. Absolute game changer. The, the ultra rich who have kept this to themselves forever. Um, I mean, we're coming up, we're, we're coming after them, right? We're not coming after them personally, but we're coming after that space. Right. You know, and, and I don't know if you feel this way, but I also, the more money I make though, I also start to understand why the rich, do keep it to themselves because you go back and you try to prophesize and share what's working. And then people call you a scam. Yeah. Fraud. You know, I, I have videos where I share my trades and then they're like, well, share your last trade, share the trade before that. I'll share those. They're like, we'll show your tax returns. I'm like, I am not posting my tax returns for a random person on YouTube. Yeah. Then you show your year to date. They're like, well, show what you did two years before that. It's like, sometimes you're like, you know what? Forget I even tried to help. Like sometimes yeah. I can see why the wealthy just like, you know what? I'm good. Let me just yeah. make my money and stay in my corner. I, I try not to ever get that frustrated. I just ignore people like that. But I'm saying there are moments where I'm like, I see why the wealthy just keep it to themselves because sometimes you go back and try to help and then you get crucified for it or you get tomatoes thrown at you. Yeah. And and what's amazing, what I, what I thought was like, okay, it's only poor people like me that throw the tomatoes and it's not. Like we've had, you know, I had a guy that, had an MBA from Harvard and he was like, this is a fraud. You can't do this. I'm like, buddy, I'm, are you serious? I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what I find is when people don't understand something, their default response is it's a scam or it's a fraud. Yeah. To me, I no longer get as upset. First thing I say is you don't understand. Cause if you understood, you wouldn't say that. Yeah. And so I usually try to say like, Clearly, you didn't understand something. What part of it is a fraud? Yeah. You explain to me what part of it is a scam. Right. And and then I can kind of figure out where their mindset is at and why they're why they kind of have that stinking thinking. And again, sometimes it's from that programming of, like you say, you got a Harvard MBA. What, is, what are you taught? Probably to get a job and work hard. And yeah. the Being only way to make that type of money is yeah. to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And, you know, I, I tried with, you know, with that particular guy, I'm like, oh, the exact question. What is it? Well, all of it. I'm like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> like, like, I'm not the only person doing this. There's like millions of people who have done this. Like, the, you know, come on. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm an amateur on the Bible, but even Jesus couldn't save everybody. So, uh, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, in a way, though, because uh, I am a Christian also, in a way, when I read the Bible, uh, when I read scriptures, I'm like, oh, I understand. He's out there preaching the good word, and people are like, no, it's not right. It's blasphemy. Like, blasphemy. Liar, right? <laughs> yeah. He's just like, I no, <laughs> I don't know what to do other than I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm, I'm just sorry. 
right? And whether people are Christian or not, the point is no matter what you try to share, there's a group of people whose mindset isn't ready to receive it and they don't know how it works. And so when they don't know how something works, they default negative. And negative is usually, it's a scam. It's a lie. Why would anyone do that? And it's like, you know, or you got people who default positive. It's a miracle. It's a blessing. Thank God I came across your content, right? And those are same the information, are. two different types of people. <laughs> and those are the people you can help. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, well, Jason, man, I, I love what you're doing. I love your heart, man. I love that you're, you're persevering. You went out there, you lost, you kept going, you lost again, you won some, you lost some more, you went up and then you lost it all. And then you kept going. And one of the things I hear out there is, you know, oh, these guys lost it there. Um, Cause there's been in, you know, a lot of real estate folks who have lost a lot. And I just think, uh, what I'm curious is, is if they're going to get back up, are they going to be able to keep going or or not? And um, I'm interested to see because they could have done everything right, but the market got them, you know? Right. And But guess what? That's life, right? You, do you life. do everything right on your job and sometimes you still get laid off? A COVID-19 hits? Yeah. You did like, everything you, right. And your default response shouldn't blame them. It should be. You say, I'm not going to get another job because I got laid off. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to do another stock trade because I lost some money. I'm never going to do another real estate deal. I hate you because you, you know, no, no. It's like, all right. What was the pattern? That's what you said. What's the pattern? How do I figure this out? How do I move forward? You know, and that's how we should be as investors. That's how we should be as people. I love that pattern in your life. I love how you found it and you use it to change other people's lives. Jason, thank you so much for being on the call. I mean, I, I wish you all the success you could possibly handle. I hope you're a billionaire um, someday so that I can say one time I had him on my podcast before he hit the big B. So tell, uh, can you share with us, you know, with our investor, uh, our investors, our, uh, um, our listeners, where can they find you at? Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me on. Uh, I appreciate it. It's, you know, anytime I get a chance to just chat and spread the message of hope, of prosperity, of getting back up after getting knocked down. I know someone's going to hear this and it's going to impact them. Uh, One of the questions that I always get is like, how can I find you or how can I, you know, start tapping into some of that content? And the best place to go is the brownreport.com. We have what's called a stock market starter pack. So if they don't know anything about the stock market, um, how to open your account, how to read the three most profitable chart patterns. That's in that stock market starter pack. Then we also have a stock option starter pack. And if you don't know how to make money when the market's going down or sideways, we teach you how to do that by using call and put options. And that's in the stock option starter pack. Both can be found at the brownreport.com and they're both free resources for people. Thank you so much. We'll put that in the show notes. Also in the show notes for the Brown Report. Um, I see your Instagram is Brown Report. Your Facebook is the Brown Report. The TikTok Everything is the Brown, Brown, Brown Report. Report. <laughs> I love it, man. When you got something, just stick with it. YouTube is Brown Report. Just stick with it. Put it across. And people know. And I love the paradigms that you're breaking. Uh, man, thank you so much for being you and doing it. So um, Awesome, Sam. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. So everyone, if you have questions, concerns, if you liked what you heard, hit the like and the subscribe button. Uh, Give this a nice five-star rating because anything less in our society right now is like you hate it. It's somehow a four-star is like, I hate this. (laughs) So hit the like and subscribe button. But more importantly, go check out Jason Brown, all the amazing stuff he's doing. Subscribe to the Brown Report and go out there and make a difference in the world. Um, right now, today, whether it's in your world or you're at the point where you can make a difference in other people's lives. Let's go. All right. Any last words, Jason? You never go broke taking a profit. (laughs) (laughs) You never go broke taking a profit. That is absolutely true. All right, everybody. Thank you again. Thank you for tuning in to Clean Money, where we talk about sustainable investing that improves society. We are passionate about creating great investment returns to investors who want to use their money to make a positive social impact in the world. 
If you enjoyed the episode, we'd appreciate a five-star review. And if you are interested in making your investing matter, please connect with us at wildmountaincapital.com. Or you can find me, Samuel Sells, on LinkedIn, on Twitter at Sells underscore Samuel, on Instagram at Clean Money Sam, or on Facebook. And finally, make your investing matter.